Hi, Fanny. Hi. Thank you for being here. Thank and you for congrats having me. on the book. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, and also for thank you for bringing ice cream to everyone in the audience. Today. How was <laughs> You're it? You're welcome. <laughs> that is such a nice Friday treat. So this book is all about Mexican ice cream. Yes. And it's really interesting. In addition to recipes, you go into the history of Mexican ice cream and why this is so special. Mm -hmm. but can you share what makes it different from ice cream that people are used to eating in the states? Um, well, I think that um, there's a just like regular cuisine in Mexico, there's a lot of regionality that people don't often know about. So ice cream culture in Mexico is very important. And there's certain flavors that you can only find not just in a specific state, mm -hmm. but in a specific city or a small town from from that region. And that's one of the things that makes it special. But also, uh, for the most part, it's an oral tradition, just like a lot of uh, sweet traditions in Mexico. So they have been recipes that have been passed down from generations to generations. And uh, for most of them, they're still making them the old fashioned way, which is called nieve de garrafa. It's a metal cylinder. Uh, it's kind of like a churn, but instead of like churning it, it's a, a long uh, paddle. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a combination of a lot of things, but I think that um, it's just delicious also. Yes. <laughs> it is very labor intensive. And yes. I was so impressed by the range of flavors. I know you say in the book that Mexico was the birthplace of chocolate and vanilla. Yes. But there's also <laughs> so many exotic flavors and fruits I hadn't heard of. What are mm -hmm. your, some of your personal favorites? Well, you know, it was editing the book was very difficult because there's a lot of um, fruits that you know, don't just don't grow in the States, but mm -hmm. even don't grow in certain parts of Mexico. So some of my uh, favorite flavors are flavors that you can only find in <laughs> this one area. But, and I love sorbet and I think it gets a really bad wrap. But in Mexico, uh, if you go to an ice cream stand or an ice cream shop, you will see, you know, a large portion of it that are sorbet. So it's not just like, oh, we're going to have lemon and strawberry or mango just to you know so you have an option but actually it's something that people crave so mm -hmm. all of the sorbets you know the tamarind the soursop uh you know there's one uh, from um, oaxaca which is a lime ice cream but all of the uh, sorbet sorry but the flavor comes from the zest it oh. doesn't have any juice and it's really really vibrant and uh but all of them are my yes. favorite. Yes. Is there, as our flavor, so, so Fanny has a shop called La New Yorkina, mm -hmm. which is right on Sullivan Street, in addition to some ice cream stands all over the city. Yes. Uh, and is there any flavor that you've tried to debut here that just didn't land or didn't appeal to the audience? Um, well, we had, when we first opened the shop, we did a mole ice cream, which is a personal favorite. So huh. it's a flavor that a lot of people are very curious about and they're excited about. And so they try it, but then they go for something else. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but now we've actually had people asking for it again. So we're going to make it again oh, now good. that the book is coming out. <laughs> what, what's your most popular flavor? Um, that's hard, but actually two of our most popular flavors are the ones that I brought today, uh, which is a Oaxacan chocolate chunk, like we import the mm -hmm. chocolate from Oaxaca and the Tres Leches um, ice cream, and then the Mexican vanilla oh, is yes. always good. <laughs> but we have a lot of rotating flavors, so mm -hmm. um, a personal favorite is uh, we have a coffee that's a very deep coffee from Chiapas, which is a southern state, and it has a salted cajeta which is a uh, goat's milk caramel. Oh, it's so good. Sounds so good. <laughs> so I'm sure on an 80 degree day in New York like today, business is booming. But what is it like to run an ice cream shop all year round? How do you make it work? Uh, you know, it's still a work in progress, to, to be honest. I mean, this was our first, uh, we opened the shop. I opened the shop in uh, mid-October of mm -hmm. last year and before that it's been a seasonal business where we have carts in different parts of, of the city as you say and we do caterings we do some hotels and and restaurants that we supply mm -hmm. to but we opened later than we wanted to 
as it often happens in yes. New York. And, uh, and it was a challenge, you know? And because f for the most part, most people that know us know us for our paletas, which are Mexican style ice pops. And people don't really crave paletas in the winter or in the mm -hmm. fall. They do crave ice cream, but it takes a while for people to know you, to think of you. Um, and we do have some other offerings, you know, like, uh, but we, this, this winter we are, going to be adding uh, these two very special things. Well, one is churros. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so churros and ice cream and uh -huh. Mexican hot chocolate. So that's always good. But we're also going to be having these things called marquesitas, which are, imagine like a cone batter, but like those large crepes. Okay. You know, like that big. And then it's rolled up and it has <gasps> this cheese inside, like Gouda cheese. It's so good. Oh, so it's savory. It's savory. So it's savory and then sweet on the outside. That's the traditional one. And then we'll have some house made jam or a caramel, the goat's milk caramel to go with that. So That's, but it's but it's a work in oh in progress. God. That sounds great. I've had some of your savory cooking. I remember you made the Mexican corn um for that barbecue. Yes. And it's so good. Do you ever Clearly, you're very skilled in beyond pastry cooking. Do you ever think <laughs> about going into savory? Uh, I do. I actually started my career in the savory side. Mm -hmm. um, so any chance that I get an opportunity to cook savory, I get very excited. And I do have this one project that sort of bridges both of them. It's, you know, it's brewing. I just need to find time. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but where I would hope to be able to do some more savory uh, stuff as well. Yes, I would hope so as well. Um, so we did a story on Grub Street that was right after the election, and I spoke to you, mm -hmm. and it was how Mexican restaurant owners feel now that Trump is president. And this book is such a beautiful celebration <laughs> of Mexican culture. And you had said at the time a few things you were concerned about. One was how your staff felt. Mm -hmm. Also, if the Mexican products that you bring to New York would go up in price. So I wanted to check back and see how does that feel now? Has anything changed for your business? Um, well, the fact that, you know, he's president still sucks, <laughs> you know, for, for us, sorry. Um, but, um, you know, the, the worry is still there, but you just keep on going. The prices have gone up, like the limes, the avocados, everything. Mm -hmm. The frustration has gone up, but at the same time, you know, you just keep going. And one of the things is, you know, we have a lot of tourists that visit the area and you do get... A lot of people, not a lot, but you get, you know, a handful of people that, you know, sort of diss things just because it's Mexican. And, you know, it's sort of a moment where, you know, we've always been, I've always been very proud to be Mexican and always been about celebrating Mexico. But it's sort of like now everybody that, that works, you know, with us and for us, it's like, okay, now everybody, you know, just has to be much more forceful mm -hmm. about the mission. Um, but it's a, it's, it's present. It's just, you have to use it more as a motivator instead of, uh, of the opposite. Yes, certainly. I'm so glad the book exists and Thank your businesses you. are such a celebration of that. Thank what, you. Thank what you are so your much. tips? You know, I know for some, I eat ice cream all the time, but I've never made it at home by myself. Ah, and I know well, I hope that now yes. the book you <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you um you know what are your general tips for people who are just getting started? Obviously equipment is key to, to begin. Yeah, so um you know for anybody that you know wants to venture into ice cream making, I would say if you are just starting out, like you don't need to spend you know, hundreds of dollars in an expensive machine. You can, you know, move towards that when you yes. actually are going to use it a lot. Um, it's really all about the ingredients, you know, like in, in cooking. Like if you're going to use uh, fruit, get the ripest fruit that you can find. And often if you buy it at the farmer's market, uh, you can ask them for what they uh, often refer to as seconds, which is like fruit that is a little bit bruised or they're not perfect, mm -hmm. but it's actually they're overripe and they're perfect because they have all of the sugars concentrated. Um, always also, if, if for most of the recipes, let it mature. So let it, uh, you know, sit in the refrigerator overnight. That way all of the, the flavors really, uh, you know, come together better. 
So I'm supposed to make it and then just let it and then not eat it for a couple hours. That doesn't patience. Patience is virtue. Patience I don't know if that's great. But, work but for certain me. things, you know, like something that had like a lime, you want to make it right away because otherwise it's going to oxidate. Okay. Um, and you can make it right away. Don't worry. It's just the flavor is going to be more concentrated. That's good to know. And you've hinted at it here and also in the book, you know, you said you have so many ideas for businesses. You mentioned starting your own churro business. I mean, you already have dough donuts. But yeah. A, churro, <laughs> a churro-specific bakery sounds incredible to me. Yes. <laughs> Where, you know, what do you think the next year will look like for you? Will we see any of those new ideas? Come um, well, I always have sort of like this collection of ideas and then, you know, it just takes much more time to get to it. So instead of having like a churro specific business, I'm going to include that in the New York Ina. So, you know, we're opening here on Astor Place sometime soon, okay. I hope. We've been waiting on electricity and stuff. And it's really making the, you know, it's adding stuff to the existing store. And then, you know, we're exploring opening in L.A. So <gasps> oh. that's very exciting. And uh, so that's, you know, and then there's another um, uh, uh, sort of like a food court that's opening up in Williamsburg. Okay. So we're going to be opening there. So it's sort of growing what what exists, but also planning for growth and then somehow making room for these new new dreams and new new ventures. And, uh, you know, I would love to do more, more writing and more research and uh, already started to uh, write the proposal for the next book. <laughs> and, uh, you know, yeah. I don't like to be bored. <laughs> yes, you work hard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good. Well, on that note, we'll open the questions up to the audience. Yes. Hello. I wanted to know when you were growing up, was there any family member or friend that taught you how to make ice cream and other pastries? Uh, no, actually, there was nobody in my family who was, you know, a baker or a, or a cook. But I, I was very fortunate to grow up in Mexico City, which has amazing food. And, you know, it's just I have never met any other culture that misses the food as much as Mexicans do. <laughs> like we travel with, when I go to Mexico, I bring back, you know, tortillas and cheese and so many other things. So, so no, I'm, I'm sort of a, a black sheep in that <laughs> regard. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, ice cream was fantastic. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, so now that we are in summer and it's super hot out and New York can get really humid and stuff like that, um, what's like the best flavor for summer? Ooh, that's a good, good question. Um, for for ice cream, or well, I I would say probably like one of the sorbets or the paletas. You know, I tend to gravitate towards tart flavors. Although mango chili is always good all year round. <laughs> but um, you know, like the lime basil, we have a cucumber lime and uh, coconut, anything. So those kinds of flavors, I think, are are great for for hot summer days. Hey, Fanny. Thank Hi. you for being here. Uh, did you have any helpers recipe testing for you, or did you do it all by yourself? That's a very good question. Um, so uh, what I do with the books is, you know, I, I do the recipe testing for everything um, myself, and then I send it out to one person who helps me who does recipe testing, but also send it out to friends and family to test it out. And they fill a questionnaire because you're doing it so often and so much that it's very easy to 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 miss things or, you know, and I want to make sure that it's user friendly. Uh, so it goes through a lot of a lot of hands. And then after I get all of that, then we do we we I did the recipe testing once through uh, again. Great. Well, thank you so much for being here thank today. Thank you, Sierra. Congrats on the book. Thank you so and much. Thanks for coming out. Thank you, guys. Yeah.